Hello everyone, I'm Sejuno, and I'm really happy to talk about our paper, Influence Guided Data Augmentation for Neurotensor Completion today. And this work is based on my summer research internship project at Adobe Research. This is some information about me. And I'm a CS PhD student at Georgia Tech, and my research advisor is Professor Sridhar Kumar. And my research interests include the recommended systems, adversarial machine learning, and data mining. And let's start from what tensors are and their motivation. There are many multidimensional data which are called tensors in our life, and they are generalization of vectors and matrices to higher dimensions. And most of the real tensors are very sparse. That means the many entries are missing. And the most famous example is a movie rating tensor. Which there are three axes. The first one is user and the movie, and there is a time axis. And the value here is the rating. And there can be another tensor, social network, which indicating the friendship between users. There can be also color video tensor, which is like the tennis player is serving the ball. And this is actually a four-way tensor, and there are four axes here. And the first one is row, and the second one is column, and the third one is RGB channels, and the final one is the time frame. And their value is about the intensity. And the predicting missing values of those tensors are very important and crucial task. And like I said, in many real tensors, they are very sparse. That means there are many missing values, and if we can predict those missing values very accurately, then we can use them as in many applications. And the like well-known implication it can be a recommended system, and when you think about movie recommendation, if we can predict the rating of the user and this movie at this time accurately, and if the rating is high, then we can recommend this movie to the user. And for the POI recommendation, and if the visiting probability of this place at this time for the user is high, then we can recommend those places to the user. So, if we predict the missing values well, then we can generate the high quality recommendations here. And there can be another good applications of this missing value prediction. Then the next question would be how can we predict the missing values of tensors? And the conventional way for this is using tensor factorization technique. And there can be like CP factorization, Tucker factorization. There are many ways to do it. And they are like commonly producing, decomposing the input tensor to the factor matrices in a core tensor, and which is similar to the matrix factorization. Where the matrix factorization, there are only two factor matrices here. And you can just think like tensor factorization is the generalization of the matrix factorization to the higher dimension. And you can basically reconstruct the original tensor by the multiplication of the core tensor and the factor matrices. And this technique has been used in many applications like recommend system, social network analysis, and image processing, and so on. And recently, neural network has been widely used for the tensor completion task. And the first paper about this area is the NTF paper, which is proposed in KDD19. And this paper is using LSTM plus multi-layer perceptron to accurately estimate the missing values. And after that, the Costco paper has been proposed in the Wisdom Conference and this paper is using convolutional neural network to estimate the missing values. And the both paper has very strong generalization capability as well as the high prediction accuracy. However, this method still suffers from data sparsity, which means if the input tensor is very sparse, then those methods cannot predict the missing values very well. Then our natural research question here is that how can we like solve this data sparsity issue? So here is the problem definition. We are given a tensor, we are a tensor, which is probably very sparse, 
then how can we improve the imputation accuracy of existing neural tensor completion methods? And our answer would be using the influence-based data augmentation technique. And you all know that in deep learning, data augmentation is the having playing a very critical role in solving this data sparsity issue. And we can adopt the, those ideas to the neural con tensor completion area. And that's our main idea. And like in summary, if we summarize the previous works, then you can see like existing works satisfy some criteria, but not all of them. But our proposed method then satisfies all criteria, including it can be used for neural tensor completion and it can be comfortable compatible with the existing architectures and it can also use utilize the influence function and it can also be used for data augmentation. And our work is actually the first data augmentation for the neural tensor completion area. So let's find out our proposed method thing. And uh, we have like major four components in our paper and like after that four components you see that like there are new data points in that t tensor and compared to the original tensor you see that like these red dots which are like they are actually the data mutation here and this four process is to how to generate those the data mutation points so let's let's check the each components one by one and the first process here is that we are going to train the neural tensor completion method and we are going to obtain the tensor embeddings. And here we can use any existing neural tensor completion methods as a theta here. So for example, we can use multi-layer perceptron or Costco or NTF method. And they are all produced the tensor embeddings at, after the training. So given the original tensor, we are going to train the neural tensor completion method theta here and we are going to also obtain the embeddings of the each dimension like for the movie rating data this embedding can be user embedding movie embedding and time embedding and after that after we train this model we are going to jump to the step two the step two is computing the importance of each training cell or each training instance and we are going to define the importance or influence later uh, like to estimate the importance, we are going to use the state of the art method called track in, and we are going to like skip the mathematical details because of the time limit, and, but the details are in the, our appendix. So let's see what's the like, how can we define the importance or influence? So, influence or importance of a training point on the test prediction is that how much this training point contributes to the loss of the test prediction. So let's see like the example here, the y axis here, you can see the Juchini here, this is the test image. And we want to see the like test loss here. And we want to see how much individual training points contribute to the this test loss. And you see the first training example Juchini here, and this is very similar to the test image. So it actually very helpful for our test prediction and it lowers the loss function. That means it's the high, it has the high influence, positive influence. And when you see the next three examples, which are about seatbelts and apparently they are not related to the, our test image. So they are not like useful for our prediction, at, at least for this test point. So they are increasing the loss and we say they have a, they have negative influence for this test prediction. So they have like negative influence here and they are called opponents. And this data points with the positive influence, we call them proponents. And if we use the influence function here, then we can define the influence of each training cell or training instance using the influence function mathematically. And uh, we are going to skip those mathematical details, and, but we can discuss them later. How can we like actually define this the influence values? So after we decide the importance of all training example, and we are going to use those information to further com com compute the entity importance. 
and here's the entity is the like you can think of index from each dimension so like for the movie rating tensor you can think of each user each movie each time stamp is the each entity so then why do we need to compute this entity importance and the answer is if we just use the cell importance and just instance importance then that's not enough we cannot generate the new data points with just using the cell importance it's really hard to create the new data points from that just finding the existing data points but if we know the importance importance of existing entities then we can find like important entities from each dimension like let's say we know the important user, important movie, important time, then we can combine them and create a new data indices, a new data point by just finding the important entities, and which is very easier to create a new influential data points. And that's the, our key idea to, for the data augmentation. So we need to compute this entity importance and how we do it. And we just using the simple aggregation technique. First, we distribute the cell importance to the corresponding entities. So if here is the alpha i, j, k, and we are going to distribute this value uniformly to the alpha i, alpha j, alpha k here, and each entity like sums up the, their allocated cell importance values using this equation here. And you see that like for the single entity importance, there are like sigma here, which is summing up the, or the allocated cell importance here. So after we compute the entity importance, the final step is the actual data augmentation. So for the data augmentation, we need the tensor indices and their values. And for the compute the tensor indices, we are going to use the weighted sampling technique. That means just actually it's very easy. You can just think of sampling the important entities from each dimension. So for the first dimension here, we are going to sample Q1, and the next one is Q2, and the next one is Q3. And if the entity importance is high, then this values is more likely to be sampled. So this sampling process is based on their entity importance value, and that's like enable us to find the most important entities from each dimension. So after we do the weighted sampling on each dimension, and we are going to have this sentencer indices for the new data points, but we still need uh, their values. And to predict their values, we are going to use the another neural tensor completion method to predict them. And in this case, we can use the same neural tensor completion method from the first step. You can use the like same method, but uh, our experiments tell us that using the different neural network architecture is more like preventing the overfitting, so it's giving us more higher performance. So we are suggesting using the different neural completion method here for the barrier prediction uh, rather than the same one from the step one. So after we predict their ten or the tensor indices and their barriers, and we are combining them and we are going to augment them to the original tensor and we have the final augment data augmentation here. This is our red dots here. And we finish the data augmentation. And we retrain the model and we will see the boosted performance. So let's see some experimental settings and data set we used. Uh, the data set we used are four real tensors, uh, moving amnesty, which is a video data set. First care is the POI data set and Reddit, Reddit is well known and last FM is the music data set. Uh, our primary evaluation metric is test RMSE, which is lower is better. And our purpose method is Dane, as we just explained. And our baseline augmentation methods are the first one is just random duplication, which is just randomly selecting existing points and no like modification. And the next one is you, we slightly change their indices. And the third one is we send, randomly sample the indices and predict their values by MLP. And the first one is the same, just using the different value predictor. So let's see the result and let's see the how effective Dane is. So this result shows the, our data augmentation performance on the moving in this data set. And as you see, we, there are like five different baseline, five different methods, including our proposed method Dane. And as you can see, our method Dane shows the lowest test RMSE for all data augmentation ratio. 
And that means our method outperforms all the baseline data augmentation methods in terms of test time C and with the statistical significance. And it shows the effectiveness of our data augmented framework. And we also did a lot of evaluation study to show that our design is correct, our design choice is correct for each step. As we explained, there are like four different steps and we made some choices for each step. Like for the first step, we can use any neural architecture, but we use the MLP architecture over the Costco embeddings because we, that give us more lower test RMSC, which is higher accuracy. Uh, based on our evaluation study, we proved that all of the major components of our method thing is uh, prove their effectiveness uh, in terms of the test RMSC. So we made the right choice for each each like step. Um, we, in the appendix, we have more evaluation study results for each like step. But this result is source for the first step about the which neural architecture we should use. We also compared like like I said, we can use the different influence estimator like tracking or we can use the other papers, but as you can see this tracking method is the shows the best test RMSC, so we use this influence estimator as our default one. And this is also about for the moving MNIST data set. And this is about scalability result and we as you can see in on the both like real tensors and or the synthetic tensors, our methods scales near linearly with respect to the number of augmentation. So but as you can see like there's some big jump from the zero percent to ten percent and which is about that this runtime is this big jump is about uh star importance calculation as well as the entity importance calculation. So after the 10%, you see that like the running time is always almost like li linearly increasing. So yeah, this just big jump is for the calculation of the importance. Um, yeah, so our work is the first data mutation for on the neurotensor completion area. And we propose the influence-based data augmentation technique. And as you can see, our work actually outperforms all the existing baselines. And we also proved the effectiveness of our design choices for the all major steps of our framework based on the evaluation studies. And for the future work, we can use our framework for the downstream test for like recommendation. And we can also test our framework with the different neural architecture rather than just like Costco MLP. We can also try the like more complex architectures. And thanks for the listening. And we also summarize our code and data set we used in the paper in this paper in this link, and you can check it out. And let's have a Q&A session. Thank you very much again.